Hey, it's Kat from The Creative Introvert. And today I'm going to be continuing with my series on the fifth house of creativity and exploring that uh, in terms of astrology and how creativity might show up for you. Um, I've had a little break from this series, um, and but I've got some really positive feedback from it. So thank you for that. Um, and I'm going to be continuing it because I'm trying to finish things, says the very cardinal heavy person. Um, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. So the series is basically um, a way to explore creativity. Like I said, um, we look at the fifth house in astrology, mostly for creativity, though the fifth house does mean other things as well. So the interpretations that I give are based primarily on focusing on creativity um, but the fifth house can mean other things like play, sport, sex, pleasure, all of these other things, children. So creativity is just one of the things that the fifth house can represent. Um, and how I'll be doing it is I'll take the Lord or the planet that rules the fifth house um, and going through the signs. So seeing where that planet is, yeah, it will make sense as I go on. So all right, we're going to today we're going to be continuing and we'll be looking at the fifth house in Cancer. So if you have this placement based on whole sign houses, I use whole sign houses, so this will simplify things a lot. Um, if you have this placement, you will have Pisces rising. And so C Cancer is coinciding with the fifth house, which you can see here. Uh, cancer is the domicile of the moon. This is the temple of the moon. So we'll be looking at the moon today going through all of the signs. Uh, I associate cancer with nurturing, the home, our desire to nest, our interest in the past, nostalgia, memory, deep sensitivity, and empathy. And the time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, where cancer season happens when the sun is in cancer, actually marks the beginning of the summer solstice. This is the longest day. But after that, the sun begins to, um, uh, the light begins to de decline. Uh, and that's partly why we have this association with um, nostalgia with cancer, a sense of looking back on the past on brighter days um, and also memory. These things are also associated with the moon. Cancer is a cardinal sign. So there is a tendency to be really great at beginning things, commencing things, um, maybe a difficulty with um, continuing things. But there's definitely the sense of beginnings when we think of cardinal signs. Uh, cancer is also a watery sign. And as a water sign, cancer would be thought of as mute. It doesn't speak. I mean, it's, it's represented by the crab. And all of the mute signs, the water signs, are represented by things that don't really have voices, or at least not ones that we can hear. Um, so it's worth thinking about, you know, what experiences in life go uncommunicated? What happens when something isn't spoken well it's not really good for us to not express our feelings um, but sometimes it's not really possible to verbalize our feelings either so these are just kind of some ideas um, that there is a form of expression with water signs but it might not be as like obvious as it can be with air signs let's say so that is the vague and archetypal bit over with um, but now we're going to get into the specifics um, because just knowing a little bit about cancer isn't going to tell you everything you need to know about the fifth house in your chart and how creativity will manifest for you. So for your own chart, you are going to want to look at, are there any planets in that house? Uh, these are going to all flavor uh, how creativity shows up for you. You know, what are those planets? What do they represent? Um, what planets are um, aspecting them? These are all more in-depth things that if you're not too familiar with astrology, I'd be more than happy to help you look at. Um, if you want to check out the readings that I offer, you can go to thecreativeintrovert.com slash astrology. But if you're still with me and you just want to look at um, the basics that we're, we're going to be going through today, all you really need to look at is um, the fact that you have Pisces rising, that the fifth house is in Cancer. And now we're going to be looking at where the Lord of Cancer is and the Lord of Cancer is the moon, as I've mentioned. So the moon is um, of the nocturnal, the nighttime sect. It's thought of as, you know, it's, as important as the sun in many ways. Um, it's the other luminary that almost leads the team of planets uh, and the team that the moon 
leads is the nighttime team, which includes Venus and Mars. Anyway, um, depending on what house and sign the moon falls in, it's going to say a lot more about how creativity is showing up for you as the moon rules Cancer. So now, if you know your birth chart or can, uh, can pull it up, you can go to astro.com, for example, to put in the details and find your birth chart. And you should be able to see where the moon is um, in terms of the whole sign house. And uh, that's all you're going to need to follow along today. So if the moon is in your first house, this will be the moon in Pisces. It will be in a trine to the fifth house. And this is a positive thing. This is meaning that um, the moon can see her own domicile and will be supportive of things related to creativity and other fifth house topics. The moon is in Pisces, which is Jupiter's home sign or temple. And the first house represents the self, the body, your appearance, your psychology. It's a very personal house. The moon in Pisces is likely to suggest that the native is very sensitive to other people's feelings in a very intuitive way, um, though it may become overwhelming. You know, if, if you're somebody, you have probably might have heard of the concept of empaths and the idea of highly sensitive people who can get a bit overwhelmed by um, feeling so much from other people. Uh, there might be a desire to help others in need, to save them. It could be that the moon here um, represents somebody who's kind of taken advantage of due to their heightened sense of compassion. Uh, the example I have today for this placement is Allen Ginsberg, and this is the chart that we're looking at. He was an American poet and writer. And he was friends with William S. Burroughs, Burroughs, Burroughs and Jack Kerouac, and with them formed the Beat Generation. In Howl and in his other poetry, Ginsberg drew inspiration from the epic free verse style of the 19th century American poet Walt Whitman. And both of these people wrote passionately about the promise and betrayal of American democracy, the central importance of erotic experience, and the spiritual quest for the truth of everyday existence. In 1948, in an apartment in Harlem, Ginsberg had an auditory hallucination while reading the poetry of William Blake. Um, this is later referred to as his Blake vision. At first, Ginsberg claimed to have heard the voice of God, but later interpreted the voice as that of Blake himself. Apparently not drug-induced, but later he did go on to recreate, try to recreate that experience with drugs. Interestingly, Blake also had the moon in the first house. Um, so yeah, what we're seeing here is creativity basically being inspired by um, otherworldly um, experiences. And again, we're kind of getting this sense of these spiritual experiences also from Pisces. You could go even further and say, oh, the, the ruler of Pisces here, Jupiter is in the 12th house. And these can definitely, 12th house experiences can definitely be um, otherworldly or, um, you know, not all here in the physical manifest world, let's say. There is Mr. Ginsburg there. Now we're going to move on to the moon in the second house, which will be in Aries. So the moon in Aries is actually in a square to the fifth house, um, placements, which is a more challenging aspect. So while the moon can see what's happening in Cancer, um, there might be some challenges between the second and the fifth house. Um, so Aries is Mars's home sign. So this is also the, um, the lesser malefic. Um, Mars can also represent difficulties, strife, um, war, things like that. And the second house represents finances resources, anything that supports you personally. And the moon here is in a place kind of counter to its nature. Um, Mars's home is hot and dry. Um, the moon is by nature cold and wet. Mars is about assertion, independence. The moon is about receptivity, interdependence. So the moon in Aries can definitely speak to a distance, more detached emotional life, um, especially in relation to the mother um, or as a mother difficult relationships with females or the feminine. Uh, in terms of the house, which represents resources, this could speak to some volatility in terms of how the native supports themselves. Um, it might just feel like a tense battle just to do that. So Whitney Houston has this placement and or had this placement, and that is the chart that we're looking at here. Um, you could also look to see that Mars, um, who is opposing the moon, so the, the ruler of 
the second house where the moon is, is in its detriment in, in Libra up here. Uh, so this is going to make things even more challenging still for, for Whitney Houston in particular. Um, what I think is a really strong indication of the moon and Aries in her chart is this calling that she seemed to have to stand up for and defend the perception of women as strong members of society. She chose a role in the film Waiting to Exhale because she saw the film as a breakthrough for the image of black women because it represents them both as professionals and as caring mothers. For the soundtrack, she wanted it to be an album with vocal distinction. Sorry, an album of women with vocal distinction and thus gathered several African-American female artists for the soundtrack to go along with the film's message about strong women. So I think that's an amazing um, moon in Aries. Um, you know, it's, it's the moon as this kind of caring, supportive place for women. And, you know, Mars's home sign of Aries, giving this sense of like warriorship, standing up for um, rights and what you believe in. Amazing. And though Houston was seen as a good girl with a perfect image in the 1980s and early 1990s, her, beha uh, her behavior had changed by 1999 and 2000. She made an appearance on TV in 2001 where her extremely thin frame further spurred rumors of drug use. Houston's publicist said, Whitney has been under stress due to family matters. And when she's under stress, she doesn't eat. In a 2009 interview with Oprah Winfrey, Houston acknowledged that drug use had been the reason for her weight loss. Her voice, so this is, you know, the second house can speak to any kind of resources, which kind of includes like food, literally anything we kind of put into our body. So this is the kind of uh, the more damaging, um, difficult side of that placement. Her voice referred to in the industry as the voice could also be seen as a second house asset. Um, Whitney Houston was blessed with an ast astonishing vocal range and extraordinarily technical skill but what truly made her a great singer was her ability to connect with the song and drive home its drama and emotion, Moon, with incredible precision, Mars slash Aries. And that was from um, a quote from Rolling, Rolling Stone magazine. So a really broad um, range of examples that I think helps us really understand the second house with, with this chart. The moon in the third house in Taurus. So the moon here in the third house is exalted this is the moon's place of exaltation it's also in a sextile to the fifth house which is an extra bit of supportive um support there uh taurus is venus's home sign and the third house represents short distance travel siblings regular communications or publications serial works um and but yeah basically our local environment so the moon in Taurus can speak to financial security or anything that helps the native feel safe and supported. Um, they might attract the finer things in life, material comforts. Um, it might be that their creative work is pleasantly supported by their siblings or local community and environment. They could also be quite prolific in terms of putting out creative content and most likely work at a very steady fixed pace. Vincent, Vincent Price had this placement and that's whose chart we're looking at. He was an American actor, best known for his performances in horror films, uh, although his career spanned other genres too, including film noir, drama, mystery, thriller, and comedy. He appeared on stage, television, uh, and radio, and in more than 100 films. So that is the prolific quality of the moon in Taurus in the third house. He worked from his 20s until he died in the 80s. Hilariously, Price was also a gourmet cook, and he authored several cookbooks with his second wife. So Moon and Taurus loves, loves to eat, basically. Um, not to stereotype this, but I did find that funny that Vincent um, was a total gourmet cook. So the moon in the fourth house in Gemini. So the moon here is in Mercury's temple and is in aversion to the fifth house, meaning it can't see by line of sight the fifth house which is next door it's just like it's too close um so the fourth house represents which is which is not ideal this means that the moon can't quite fully support what's happening in the fifth house of creativity here the fourth house represents roots parents ancestors home it's the base of the chart it's the foundation place where everything kind of comes from
It could represent a great deal of restlessness with frequent changes of residence and many trips. Um, people with this placement are very uh, adaptable to changes in their environment. So maybe we see somebody who's done a lot of moving around as a child um, and maybe that is then influential on their later creative work. It can also represent having many diverse interests. This is something we associate with Gemini, the twins. Um, it's the ability to kind of have, yeah, multiple interests or curiosities. Gwyneth Paltrow has this placement. That's whose chart this is. Um, an actress, of course, but also dabbles in other industries, most notably her lifestyle brand Goop, which is famous for touting pseudoscientific claims. The moon is also in a perfect trine to Mercury, um, which is helpful. Um, and this speaks to an open-minded quality, uh, diverse interests. Even in her early life, she was raised by parents of different faiths, so celebrated both Jewish and Christian holidays, which again reflects this kind of diversity, flexible beliefs in her early life. Moving on to the fifth house in Cancer. So this is where we get the moon in its own domicile in this place of creativity, amongst other things like children, play, sex, uh, sport, games. Creative work might feel um, particularly driven by feelings, emotions, lunar things. Um, it might have a sense of nostalgia for the past. Uh, it might speak to the nature of mothers or mothering or nurturing something. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross had this placement. She was the author of On Death and Dying, where she outlines the five stages of dying. Throughout her life, she has assisted perhaps 20,000 people with their tr transition into the afterlife. With her total belief in the con continuity of life spirit through the experience of death, she hit upon a groundbreaking method of counseling, listening to the patient first and then continuing with the medical techniques. I can't think of a more nurturing, um, emotion-driven kind of creative work, especially one that also ties in with this idea of the spirit going back to where it came from. If you just think about the moon, how it's this body in the sky that reflects the light of the sun. It's not the source of the light, and it's a reminder um, that there is something more real than what we're currently you know, dealing with, this, this, this computer, this webcam, this... Uh, this microphone, um, there's something more real beyond that. Anyway, that's that's a really interesting kind of aspect of cancer. And um, with Kubler-Ross, both, both her sun and moon are in that place, North Node and Pluto as well. So moving on to the sixth house in Leo. So the moon here is again in aversion to the fifth house. It's in the sun's domicile. And the sixth house represents health issues, laborious work, it was traditionally called the house of bad fortune and it was the joy of Mars. Interestingly, Mars is in this person's sixth house. The moon and Leo can speak to difficulties with fame, like the native wanting to keep their lives private, but ending up oversharing um, or accidentally becoming public, but not really wanting to. Um, it could be that they get known for things that they would rather keep private. Sixth house matters like ill health or the kind of work that doesn't exactly bring them joy. So uh, Ringo Starr had this placement and that's whose chart this is. Um, also potentially Paul McCartney, but I believe his birth time is questionable. So anyway, on the health front, Starr was afflicted by life-threatening illnesses during childhood with periods of prolonged hospitalizations. Um, and as you see, he's also got Mars and Pluto in the sixth. So potentially difficulties there anyway. Um, and some of those issues actually continued throughout his life. In terms of um, consistency, I wanted to talk about consistency because Leo is a fixed sign. And even though the moon is like certainly not associated with fix fixity, it's really um, associated with fluidity and fluctuations. But actually in Leo, we've got more of an emphasis on um, being able to kind of like stick with something consistently and um, in his book, The Complete Beatles Recording Sessions, Mark Lewison um, concurred that Starr was proficient and consistent. According to Lewison, there were fewer than a dozen occasions in the Beatles' eight-year recording career 
where session breakdowns were caused by star making a mistake, while the vast majorities um, of the takes were stopped owing to mistakes by the other Beatles. So that's just a nice little like quality of um, the ruler of the fifth being in a fixed sign. Yeah, and in terms of fame, well, you could say that Star was probably the, like the lesser known or the lesser um, fame craving or fame attracting beetle. There he is there. So moon in the seventh house, the moon will be in Virgo here. So this is um, going to be in a sextile to the fifth house and Virgo is the temple of Mercury. Seventh house can represent relationships primarily, partnerships. So mostly, you know, marriages, but can also represent business relationships of a kind of long-term nature. The moon in Virgo might speak about a partner of the native who's particularly sensitive to the nuanced emotional needs of others. It's a combination of the intellect, Mercury, uh, and our emotions, the moon. And it can also represent a creative who's also very articulate, when it comes to expressing their emotional states. Um, the chart I have as an example here is Alexander Graham Bell's. Bell's father, grandfather and brother had all been associated with work on elo elocution and speech and both his mother and wife were deaf, uh, deaf profoundly, um, profoundly influencing Bell's life work. Amazing. Um, his research on hearing and speech further led him to experiment with hearing devices which eventually culminated in Bell being awarded the first US patent for the telephone on March 7th, 1876. Crazy. This is like one of my favorite chart examples of all time. Um, the moon is opposed to Mercury, debilitated in Pisces. You know, again, it was, we're talking about his, his wife and um, what was it, sister. Um, sorry, mother and wife were being deaf. Uh, moon being in Mercury's domicile, Mercury being debilitated, Moon speaks to mothers, women, Mercury speaks to, you know, communication, hearing, speech. And um, Saturn uh, is also co-present with Mercury in Pisces. And that speaks to limitations, um, being in the dark, agnoia or ignorance. So literally limits imposed on the mother's and wife's communication. Um, and yet we also get the sun there, which is associated with your calling in life, um, your destiny uh, and fame. So really interesting placements there. Next up, we've got the moon in the eighth house in Libra. So the moon here is in Venus's temple in a square to the fifth house. So in a more of a challenging aspect, the eighth house represents taxes, death, debt, inheritance, things you get from your partner, things that are coming to you. Um, yeah, the karmic fruit of your life. It's potentially really great for very pleasing creative work. It's, um, again, we're in Venus's home now. So we're thinking about, um, you know, beauty and aesthetics. And it's likely very important for the native to please and create harmony and balance. Uh, it might get pleasing things from their partner, though they could also be taken advantage of in some way. David Carradine had this placement, or has this placement, I'm not sure, um, who's an actor best known for playing martial arts roles. Uh, Mars is also in the eighth, co-present with the moon, so the two are kind of acting together. Um, he was a serial monogamist. He had five marriages. Um, sorry, I, I say that because of the associations with the eighth house and divorce. Death is also a very moon and Mars in the eighth house theme. His former wife said, there was a dark side to David. There was a very intense side to David. People around him know that. Previously in her divorce filing, she had claimed that it was a continuation of abhorrent and deviant sexual behavior, which was potentially deadly. So again, we've kind of got these issues of like um, this, this dark side, this intensity, deadliness these are all kind of the vibe basically of the eighth house it's very untechnical but um and and sex as well the eighth house could definitely be associated with that to an extent um and ultimately you know the result of our behavior you know the eighth house is kind of like what's what's coming to you 
So uh, how does that affect his creativity? I don't know, but it's, it's certainly, um, this is one of the more difficult chart examples to get. Um, if you have that placement, let me know how creativity shows up for you and give me a better example than David Carradine. In the ninth house, the moon is in Scorpio. So the moon here is traditionally what we'd say is that it's in its fall, um, which is a kind of um, a lack of dignity. Basically, it's a lack of ability for the moon to do its own thing. It's in a place that is just quite contrary to its nature, ultimately. So it's just more difficult for the moon to do stereotypically lunar things. Um, it's in Mars's home sign and in a trine, which is supportive to the fifth house. The ninth house represents higher education, philosophy, travel. This could indicate a deep interest in these matters. So um, that could influence their creativity, but it could also be to a detriment to their body in some way. If the moon in this place represents our physical body and its life, and Scorpio um, has associations with death, you know, it's the time of year in the Northern Hemisphere when, we, when the sun is in Scorpio, um, where things are literally dying. Um, we see, you know, trees are kind of rotting on the floor, stuff like that. Um, so this could be the academic who studies for their creative work, but who fails to look after themselves, who forgets to eat you know, and so on. Um, great example here, Tony Hawk, uh, the pro skater, arguably, you know, the most famous skater of all time, has this placement. Um, and actually, that's a full moon he's got in his chart in Scorpio. And of course, there's this attitude of the skater, which is always death defying the kinds of things that Tony Hawk has been doing throughout his career. You could die pretty easily doing those things. Um, literally challenging his mortality um, by pulling these crazy physical stunts. A certain amount of lunacy is required for that. Um, this is the full moon, which we might associate with the more unstable aspects of the moon. Um, and remember that the fifth house is, is creativity, but it's also in great part sport. And um, I'm sure skateboarding is a, is a great example of a fifth house topic. Here we go. There's Mr. Tony Hawk. Moving on to the moon in the 10th house in Sagittarius. So the moon is in Sag here and in aversion to the fifth house, so unable to support the fifth house fully. Sagittarius is Jupiter's home sign. And the 10th house represents career, calling, what you're known for, the action you take in the world. They might, if a native with this placement, might be known for their exploratory nature. This could be somebody who travels a lot. Uh, the moon in Sagittarius is potentially somebody who's quite restless, always seeking new highs and new experiences and is drawn towards anything that frees them. It could be somebody who is known for their philosophical or religious or spiritual views. Frank Capra, director of the 1930s and 1940s famous films, including It's a Wonderful Life, It Happened One Night, You Can't Take It With You, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. When he was five, his family emigrated from Italy to the United States. Capra remembers the ship's arrival in New York Harbor, where he saw the Statue of Liberty. He recalls his father's exclamation at the site. Ciccio, look, look at that. That's the greatest light since the Star of Bethlehem. That's the light of freedom. Remember that. So the sense of freedom really marked his early life. His films then orbit around this idea of the American dream, which of course, has a lot to do with freedom. As Capra's films often carry a message about basic goodness in human nature and show the value of unselfishness and hard work, his wholesome feel-good themes have led some cynics to term his style Capricorn. However, those who hold his vision in a higher regard prefer the term Capra-esque. It's interesting, um, that whole Capricorn thing isn't like literally about Capricorn, um, but Capra corny, yeah. Uh, but I did think that was this interesting. Um, again, we're looking at this kind of a sense of an ideal um, related to a foreign land, and that's what we see in a lot of Capra's work. Uh, speaking of Capricorn, let's look at the moon in Capricorn. So the moon here is 
a place that the place is in the place that is furthest away from cancer the place that the moon is most at home therefore in capricorn it's the least at home um capricorn is uh saturn's domicile and the 11th house represents groups communities benefactors people who lift us up and support us in our career in sort of in the 10th house things it's sort of as moving towards the 10th house the native might struggle to get support from groups of people or those who might assist in their career. They might be met with coldness from others or be perceived to be cold-hearted, overly disciplined or overly ambitious. It could also speak to a comfort with the darker side of life. Creative work might express a dark tone to it. Richard Pryor had this placement, who was a comedian. Um, as Bill Cosby reportedly once said, I feel a bit crazy about quoting Bill Cosby but Richard Pryor drew the line between comedy and tragedy as thin as one could possibly paint it. Pryor developed a reputation for being demanding and respect a disrespectful on film sets and for making selfish and difficult requests. In his autobiography Kiss Me Like a Stranger co-star Gene Wilder says that Pryor was frequently late to the set during filming of Stir Crazy and that he demanded among other things a helicopter to fly him to and from the set because he was the star. Pryor was also accused of using allegations of onset racism to force the hand of film producers into giving him more money. Whoa. Uh, so yeah, this is a difficult moon. Um, but that said, um, still a very powerful creative. The moon in the 12th house in Aquarius. So the moon here is in a in aversion to the fifth house. Aquarius is also Saturn's home sign, like Capricorn. The twelfth house represents hidden matters, remote places, crisis, times of isolation, uh, self undoing. The moon in Aquarius craves comfort in the form of support and approval from others, from groups, or from society in general. However, in the twelfth house, this could backfire in some way. It might be that the native is too dependent um, on approval from others uh, and this then prevents them from expressing themselves to their full creative potential. It could also be somebody who really goes against the trend or bucks the trend in some way and can't help but creating very original work. Um, that might also speak to hidden matters, things to do with diverse mental states and illnesses. R.D. Lang had this placement. Um, who is a famous psychiatrist. And I'm just going to read straight from the Wikipedia because it says it all. And it's a profound testament to the 12th house moon in Aquarius. He wrote extensively on mental illness, in particular, the experience of psychosis. Lang's views on the causes and treatment of psychopatholo psychopathological phenomena were influenced by his study on existential philosophy and ran counter to the chemical and electroshock methods that had become a psychiatric orthodoxy. Taking the expressed feelings of the individual patient or client as valid descriptions or lived experience, rather than simply as symptoms of mental illness, Lang regarded schizophrenia as a theory, not a fact. Though associated in the public mind with anti-psychiatry, he rejected the label. So I think that's pretty spot on for the moon in the 12th house for him. And that's all we've got. Those were all of the um, placements for the moon if you have Pisces rising. Um, I hope that was helpful. I'd really like to hear how, if you do have that placement, one of those, um, let me know how creativity shows up for you. And if you'd like to find uh, out more, you can find the links to the slides that we've been through um, in the description below. And as a reminder, if you're interested in getting a personal one-to-one -one astrology reading with me, you can do that. You can go to thecreativeintrovert.com slash astrology to find out the readings that I have on offer. And we can dive a lot deeper into creativity amongst other things in your life. All right. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.